Hey Nova Nation, I'm Victoria Newsom, ready to dive into the highlights from across Villanova Athletics and over the past family weekend. Welcome to this week's edition of the Wildcat Rewind. In a race where speed meets strategy, senior Sadie Sigifstead started the season in style at the Nutty Comb Invitational on Friday, clinching the individual title in the 6K, finishing with a time of 19 minutes and 55 seconds. She outpaced 183 competitors by nearly eight seconds, guiding Villanova to a 13th place finish against a formidable field that included four nationally ranked teams. Making her move around the 4K mark, Sigo said showcased her knack for timing, unleashing a powerful finishing kick that left her opponents in the dust. We chatted with Sadie about her race experience. And Sadie joins us right now. Congratulations on winning Nutty Comb. I mean, your individual title, that's huge. It's a big deal. What does this win mean for you and your team moving forward this season? Um, I think personally for me, it's just been a huge confidence booster. Um, you know, the NCAA is at a new level um, now, you know, with just the depth it has. So I think realizing that I can like compete at that top level with like the best girls in the nation and you know, really step up this year for my teammates and my coach because she's been working with me for a long time. Um, it means a lot um, to see that progress build up. And then for my team, I think, you know, last year wasn't great um, for us. We missed nationals and I think the goal like coming off of last year and all summer has been to make it. Um, I really believe we are um, a top like 25 team at least, you know. Um, we have so much talent on our team and all the girls have such good energy and they really want to get after it at practice and I feel like this year I've seen like the best energy and just like everyone is like full in so yeah. I love to hear that you guys are all in and what helps you guys get that togetherness? I mean you have a lot of time together and you're spending a lot of time training and working on your endurance and speed. So can you share a little bit about what connects you guys together? Um, I think this year we're just um, a lot more close-knit, you know, um, I've spent now four years with these girls so I've had a lot more time to get to know them, um, but we spent a lot of time outside of practice um, and then just all the runs together, you know, getting to know us. I think bringing in a huge class of freshmen has been awesome because they're very like outgoing and um, I just like having younger faces on the team, so yeah. And what's a personal goal for you this season? I mean, I know you've been doing amazing and you have such a bright future ahead. So what are your just like general goals? Um, I think my biggest goal is to get to the team to nationals. Um, I really want to have a team there. It's way more fun having a box and you know, um, the weekend is way less stressful when you got like seven other girls with you. Um, but I think other than that, um, I'd love to be an All-American this season in cross country, um, maybe higher. I guess just take it races, like every race as I go. Um, and then looking forward to indoor and outdoor track, you know, I would love to make indoor and outdoor nationals, but um, I don't like to get too ahead of myself. I'm just going to take it one weekend at a time. Yeah. Hey, we know we're going to see you there <laughs> so soon. So thank you so much for your time, Sadie. All right. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. It. On the men's side, fifth-year runner Liam Murphy finished third with a time of 23 minutes and 8 seconds, while junior Marco Langan followed in 12th with 23 minutes and 39 seconds. Their performances helped the men's team to a 10th place finish, outpacing seven other ranked squads. Your cross-country cats get back to the hustle with the Princeton Fall Classic on October 18th. In football, the Cats ran through the rain and LIU's defense on Saturday night as the Wildcats powered their way to a 24-10 win during family weekend at Villanova Stadium. Running backs Isaiah Raglan and David Abbott drove the Cats offense, combining for three touchdowns. Raglan scored twice in the first half, while Abbott rushed for his first collegiate touchdown in the fourth quarter. Abbott finished with 160 rushing yards on 24 carries, marking the highest rushing total for Villanova true freshmen since 1977. Lockdown defense was in full effect, allowing just 26 total yards in the first half and forcing two fumbles that led to touchdowns. Head coach Mark Ferrante highlighted the team's ability to control the game and protect the football as the Cats played turnover free for the fourth time in five games. Your 4-1 Cats now head to Stony Brook on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. 
Villanova Volleyball kicked off Big East play with a dominant sweep over Georgetown on Friday night and followed it up with a hard-fought four-set win against Seton Hall on Saturday. Taylor Jacobowski, fresh off reaching 1,000 career digs last week, led the way notching double-doubles in both matches. Abby Harrell shined as well with 17 kills and 13 digs against Seton Hall, while Alyssa Nelson tallied a career-high 30 assists. With a five-game winning streak under their belts, the Cats are ready to take their first flights since August for a weekend trip to the Midwest, facing DePaul on Friday and Xavier on Sunday. To the pitch, women's soccer secured a hard-fought 2-0 victory at Creighton, marking their first Big East win and fifth shutout of the season on Thursday. Lauren Belcourt got things rolling in the 16th minute, capitalizing on a deflected ball off the post to score her first goal of the season. In the second half, Alex Little drew a penalty kick and Gabby Kaluk stepped up to convert it in the 68th minute, solidifying Villanova's lead. Goalkeeper Hannah Dickinson made eight crucial saves, keeping Creighton scoreless. Fast forward to Alumni Day on Sunday, the Cats suffered their first Big East loss of the season at home, falling 3-0 to number 21, Xavier. The Wildcats face an offensive challenge with Xavier outshooting them 24-9. They host DePaul on Thursday at 4 p.m. for a pink out game. On Tuesday, men's soccer battled number 20 Penn to a tight 2-2 draw in a Philly Soccer 6 matchup at home. Michael T. Deitz, a former Quaker, delivered a stunning long-range goal to tie the game early on. Jason Borgie grabbed the lead for the Cats in the 20th minute before the Quakers equalized eight minutes later. On Saturday, they faced St. John's, taking an early 1-0 lead after Jorge Garcia's penalty kick. But despite a solid first half, St. John's rallied with two quick goals around the 65th minute, handing the Wildcats a 2-1 loss. They'll regroup against number 24 UConn on Friday at Higgins Soccer Complex at 3 p.m. for their first student bonus lottery game of the season. On to field hockey, who celebrated a 4-2 win over Quinnipiac on Friday with Megan Mitchell shining through her two goals. Goalkeeper Maddie Sears made four saves, improving her record to 6-3. The win moved the Cats to 2-0 in the Big East. Villanova then faced a tough challenge against number 7 Iowa on Sunday and fell 2-0 in a hard-fought match. They now shift their focus to a trip up to number 11 UConn on Friday. In golf, Villanova's off to a solid start at the UConn Invitational, currently in third out of 13 teams at Great Horse Golf Course. The Wildcats have three golfers positioned in the top 10 after two days. Switching gears to student athlete events, Friends of Nova partnered with UBS for an engaging financial literacy training event at the Finneran Pavilion on Thursday night. Preble defensive end Wale Ogulea and former Villanova basketball All-American Randy Foy shared their own financial journeys. Okun, Leia, and Foy emphasize the importance of informed financial decisions as student athletes navigate the world of NIL opportunities. Hall of Fame coach Jay Wright expressed his excitement, saying, I'm thrilled to be a small piece of this great opportunity. The event also featured a spirited finance quiz led by UBS Dwayne Hughes, where the Villanova women's basketball team and field hockey teams ended up tying for first. Women's basketball senior Brona Power Cassidy reflected on the event, stating, Having something like this is a great first step. Overall, it was an engaging initiative that helps equip Villanova student athletes for success. Thanks for watching this week's edition of the Wildcat Rewind. Make sure to come out and support Villanova Athletics, and as always, go Cats!